Good evening everyone, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and tonight is the episode 420 for the OC show that's gonna be smoking good. <laughs> okay, I, I had to do it. I had to do it for the intro. Uh, tonight we have Tullius as usual. Hi Tullius, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, as, lo as long as you are actually staying on your chair, that's gonna be okay because you had a little accident yesterday. So let's, uh, let's not make you move out of your chair because you look like a very uh, old grandpa. Well, I feel like a old old person today. <laughs> well, at least you're not grumpy, so that's good. That's actually <laughs> one good part of it. And we have four... Say what? I think the meds have something to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. And we have for the first time on the show, Mikkel T from UK. What's up, man? Hi, I'm... <laughs> Deeply nervous. I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. That, that was not prepared. You were not supposed to be here. You're basically yeah. replacing Bill Zoid, and I don't expect you to talk as much as I am. So that's okay. No worry. Everything will be fine. <laughs> I, I don't think I'd be able to talk as much as him, but the, the same goes for most people. Well, I... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's actually. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. So welcome on the show. Uh, that's going to be the first time for you. And if it's the first time for you watching this video, this is a weekly show we do every Friday evening or afternoon, depending where you live on Earth. And we talk about the latest news in the hardware space and mostly about overclocking as well, the competitions and what's going on, what's coming. And well, the news we like to talk about. Uh, of course, we usually talk about the technology and hardware. So uh, let's get right into the first part of the show, which is the competition update with Toulouse. What's going on with the uh, Country Cup, man? So, <clears throat> well, the Country Cup, uh, the, the the leaderboard has kind of stayed pretty much the same. Uh, no, no major position jumps. And the gap in terms of the points has also pretty much stayed the same. Although the fight for second position is truly on. Uh, America, well, the United States, they're, they're, they're off in a lead, quite a significant one. Uh, but uh, Ukraine, Germany, and United Kingdom could very easily swap places at this point. Like We're, we're and, totally sandbagging. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I was about to ask... Not just losing. It's yeah, yeah. I, I was about to ask, ask you, Mikkel, like, as uh, the our overclocking team, there's a lot of guys based in UK. Um you were actively sandbagging or actively looking to have people send back for you? <laughs> no, we're, we're in all seriousness, we're, we're not. Um, I don't know about the MLG guys. Um, I know that I'm not sandbagging. Every score that I've made, I've posted. I don't think... I'm not sure what Rave is doing, actually. I don't think he is. Um, I For the MLG guys, I mean, I, I your guess is as good as mine as to whether Knox Knight is sandbagging. But he's a very good overclocker, and I think he can probably get more than four gigahertz out of an E eighty four hundred. So, <laughs> um, well, actually, there's some good point on the live chat. Uh, UK is procrasty bagging. Yes, yeah, we do that a lot. Um, so, so it's like so we, it's still have, we still have we still have twenty one days. It's okay to <laughs> just procrastinate and do something else. And then when there's going to be like four days, we're going to all start benching, and when there's, there's going to be four hours, we're all going to start. Rebenching everything, of course, because that's going to be too late to not, <laughs> not push a last score. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, Jumper on the live chat has confirmed Team MLG does not sandbag. Uh, Nox Knight is not Team MLG and might. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I, well... <laughs> Well, uh, how it's actually words were a bit different. Yeah, how has been so far for you uh, as part of the uh, as part of benching for UK? What, what did you bench? What score did you add? Um, so I've actually done sod all so far. Um, I got a two eighty X and benched that, and that's about it. Um, I haven't actually got round to doing it on water yet. I've got as far as attaching the block. Um, I did it with a massive air cooler zip tied to it, um, and that's about it. <laughs> Z zip tie and duct tape, that's all we need. Yeah, I'm probably not going to get Dyson, uh, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the other stages. I should be able to bench a bunch of the other stages, I just... You, to... you don't know yet which one? <laughs> I, I'm for class bagging. <laughs> it's, it's intentional, I'm strategically not bothering to bench anything until the last minute. <laughs> so you know you have exactly no chance of doing a very good score then. <laughs> 
that, that that's you're what I can make a very good score in a very short amount of time. I'll have you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's definitely like a kind of like Team Australia. It's like okay, let's do a meetup like the day just before. <laughs> and then yeah. and then what you don't know is like HW bot go down 24 hours before the end and then no one can send back <laughs> that's that might happen it, knowing hardware but it, yeah no actually it's it's going it's going better since uh, the past few uh, few days a little bit but uh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I really like, I, I did like the way uh, at some point uh, back in the, uh, actually back a few years ago, people were talking like, okay, let's make like a window in which the competition can end at any time, the popcorn time. So the basically popcorn. it can close at any point in time within that time window. So everyone have to start pushing all the scores up front to, uh, to just wait for the, uh, for the last minute. <laughs> that, that would be good yeah that would be cool and uh, I, and i told peter like if you if you do that i will totally do a show every time there's a competition ending just for that because yeah. <laughs> you can then discuss and know have all the, all the updates so yeah so far there's um 37 countries in that there's still uh 16 days before the first uh stages close uh, but there's a good um 23 days before the um the exact end of all the things that's going to be just before Christmas time. That's going to be very uh, fun for all the moderators to check all the scores from everyone. <laughs> I have an important question about the Country Cup. How is Antarctica doing? Um, <laughs> uh, let's say that in terms of scores, it's pretty cold. <laughs> Meaning there is only one and it's made with my laptop. <laughs> yeah. I, Antarctica's, uh, Antarctica is sandbagging right now. Yeah, definitely oh, yeah, sandbagging. Yeah, you're faster bagging, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big time. Big time. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I know. I'm the only one in Antarctica, so yeah. But one day, one day, I will post some good scores. One day. I just need to have Vince coming over and just do a video and it will bring all the cards and I will break a, like a top Hall of Fame score. I wish, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> one day. <laughs> so actually, it would be easier for me to go da uh, to Taipei to EVG Taipei. office and just bench yeah. with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right. Uh, so that's Country Cup. Uh, quite a few things happening. If you have not benched yet for your own country, go for it. There's a need for a lot of people and a lot of different hardware. Even if you have old stuff, even if you have old stuff, yeah. that's worth it. And this is actually yeah. the most difficult part of the Country Cup is you need to have enough submissions with different hardware. So whatever you have, even if it's a old chili PC that is uh, laying around, just give it a try. That could always uh, help out your, um, your team. Yeah. And it, it's worth mentioning any submission will help there's no way you can't harm your country by submitting if you exactly. submit a bad score for a certain piece of hardware it's not going to drag your country down either it will count because nobody else submitted and having your submission is better than not or if somebody else does submit then their submission will just replace yours anyway so you definitely don't need to worry however bad you think your overclock is however bad you think your hardware is it's worth participating. It's definitely, it's not going to hurt. You may as well go for it. Exactly. Yeah, so hey. so true. So true. Um, other competitions going on. We have the Rookie Rumble 50. And this one, I've seen a huge amount of uh, overclockers, rookies coming in. 318 yep. overclockers in this uh, Rookie Rumble 50 uh, dedicated to Intel CPUs. Well, it's actually uh, quite impressive. We do have um, New Zealand on top. I never know yes. if it's New Zealand or Australia. I always Australia. Ah, oh, it's Australia. New I think Zealand. that's no. I think that is New Zealand. No, that's New Zealand. Zealand. Australia is the big one. Anyway, um, yeah. we have Mills one in the top ranking right now, uh, closely followed by Fat In from Indonesia. Then we have uh, US and France, and we have a bunch of German guys um, going up the the lead from seven, eighth, and ninth place. Uh, let's see if uh, we can have. Uh, these guys coming up. I know that uh, Ackerman from France was being helped by the uh, FFOC, the French Federation of uh, Overclocking. So we'll see if he uh, can improve his score in the last, uh, in the next uh, seven days because there's only one week left for this competition, yeah. the Rookie Rumble. In fact, um, uh, Trof, uh, in seventh place, the, this, uh, this, um, this, this, this German overclock called, called Klaus, 
he's only submitted he's only submitted one score and in, and that's the best score so he's not submitted in in two rounds out of out of the three uh that he's definitely one to look out for because with uh, 50 points i mean he's got the best score right now in the only round that he submitted so interesting So that could be uh, that that could be a nice lead for the next two rounds, but you yeah. still have to submit for all the rounds to have the uh, to have all the scores, have even the though if it's a nah, yeah. no not not so good score, you don't have to be always top one. You have to be placed accordingly to actually have the total amount of points. Yeah. On the AMD side, uh, there is a 16 overclockers for that, and so far that's US to be in the lead, then followed by a Czech Republic. Is that Czech Republic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then uh, Cristiano Brazil. S from Brazil. So, once again, Cristiano is actually first in stage one and two, which means that uh, submitting the last stage will maybe bump him up in the in the ranking as well for, for that. Uh, same thing, that one is uh, closing on December 9th, so that's going to be next weekend, just before the uh, OCWC. Seven days, it's never too late to uh, finish the last score. Even if it's just a stock score, just put a placeholder there so you do have a score. And especially on the Rookie Rumble AMD, any score counts. Actually, that, that, should, be like the, that should be the tagline. The, like any scores exactly. count. It's free points. It's free HW mm. points, people. <laughs> yeah, actually, indeed. Speaking of um, HW bot points, uh, I will switch right to this one straight in. Uh, what did I put it? Right. There is 11 competitions that are losing points this um, this week. So how that works is for uh, for every competition you do participate in, you do gain point, like competition point. But these ones are not lifetime guaranteed. They have to you have to participate in the competitions regularly to actually. Uh, keep those points, actually gain those points. Um, basically, uh, every month, uh, you reset the point for the year uh, for the year before. So year to year, you have all your points, and then a year after that, you will lose your points. So in December, there's going to be 11 competitions that lose points. We do have the Asus ROG Chem 2016 live final that was right before the OCWC last year. Uh, that will be uh, losing points. They're all level one, so that's um, uh, online or easy competitions uh, that have uh, uh, this amount of points. Uh, we do have Mark0053 that will lose the point uh, of his HWBOT World Championship, which is the old name of the OCWC. It was the winner last year in Berlin. And you're gonna lose his competition point this year. And Mark have not been very active for the past year, so that might be actually dropping him in the global ranking for the overclockers. Uh, especially that he's actually, uh, and I knew that from today, he's actually selling a lot of his gears and of his, of his stuff. So if you go on overclock, uh, Outward Canucks forum in the sales sections, um, there's quite a lot of stuff to grab uh, for any Canadians that want to participate in the Country Cup or in uh, further competitions. I think he's selling his LN2 gear as well and, uh, and all that. Uh, because of work and uh, and things, but he says he will be back at some point. So I can't uh, I can't wait to see uh, what's what's going on uh, in there. Uh, Real Ben Challenge 2016 Challenge uh, Challenge for Fugger is losing some point for that. Uh, Wizardy as well for the leaderboard for the same kind of uh, overall uh, platform. Um, speaking actually of Wizardy, he will be at the OCWC competing for. Um, To be the OCWC champion next weekend, not this weekend, the weekend next next week. Uh, we have the Rookie Rumble 38, uh, AMD 35, Novice Nimble 12, and the uh, regular 5G competition that will be losing point as well. So that's uh, quite a lot of competitions losing point. I mean, the Rookie Rumble, of course, that's going to be like pretty much every month, month and a half, uh, that, that's going to lose point. But on the 10th of December, that's going to be quite a lot of people losing point. And the uh, Galaxy GOC as well will lose points. Uh, Lucky Noob will drop uh, some competition points. And as he has been judging quite a lot in the competition this uh, this year, the only competition points so far that he can have for a live competition will be the OCWC, which is... When? Next weekend? <laughs> And he's competing as well. So, well, we'll see. He might, uh, he might get uh, some, uh, some point back. I don't see any of you guys in there. I see uh, Lumi. I was third in the um, Novice Nimble uh, as part of the team. So, yeah, that's going to be fun for me, dropping about 30 lead points. Like <laughs> that. So, yeah, you have to 
compete in more competition again, just not the country cup right. anymore. I know, I know. <laughs> well, what, what else am I supposed to compete in then? <laughs> Um, everything. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything you can. Like every course counts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just bench harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, right. you're right. Just Pretty bench much, harder. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Uh, Lumi is losing some points uh, for the 5G Tweaker Challenge and GTI Jason as well. I don't know if uh, the guys are actually on the live chat yet, but uh, you guys we lose point just before New Year's Eve. So oh. yeah, that's uh, that's too bad. But you might actually win some. Because you're actually back in the 5G challenge as well. So we'll see. We'll see what's going on. All right, uh, Tullius, uh, G we talk about the, the GOC and uh, the fact that Lucanu will lose the competition point from GOC he won last year. Uh, what's going on with this year? It's actually, uh, it was last weekend. It was last weekend. And um, well, uh, lots of lots of uh, epic competition. I mean, uh, uh, it was it wasn't for for those who haven't been following it was it was in Bangkok um, and uh, yeah well Alza uh, Alza OC has has the first uh, Galax GOC winner actually the, this time so really 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 cool stuff um, it was it was it was um, it was Alex Rowe the one um, he won the competition and um, uh, I believe. Took home. What, what was the what was the actual prize money trophy? I'm 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 a little bit lost on what, what the prize money was. Uh, was the what, prize money 5, was uh, three thousand for the first one, then two thousand, then one thousand. Yeah, the one. There we go. And there, there was a, there was a multiple stages as well. Each stage each stages were giving you points, and points. basically uh, Alex Rowe won uh, was first into the first stage that was actually Geekbench three multi core. Uh, which is a pretty boring benchmark to watch, but a fun benchmark to bench. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then there was uh, 3D Mark Times Pi Extreme, I believe, and then there was GPU Pi uh, 1 billion and 3D Mark Times Pi. Yeah, so for the 3D Mark Times Pi Extreme, that was uh, OGS from Greece that were uh, in the in the first spot. Uh, Alex was actually in the third spot for that one. Uh, 3D Mark Time Sprite, regular, not the extreme. It was uh, Alex Rowe that was in the first spot. Then we have OGS in the third, uh, third spot. So you can see like these guys were actually quite on top. And Iki from Japan was very consistent as well. It was very consistent. On the, on the second round, on the second stage, it was second. On the third stage, it was second. second. <laughs> And he on has the... been benching like an animal. Yeah, it's it's he... crazy. He's everywhere. Like every week, there is yeah. some good scores from him. It's uh, it's quite yeah. impressive. Very dedicated uh, uh, overclocker. And Alex was uh, although at the at the top spot with the GPU Pi one uh, one B. So overall, the final ranking was Alex uh, accumulated uh, one hundred and ninety six points for the competition. Uh, maybe I can actually. Oops, no, I cannot grow that for you guys. No, no, yeah, 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 okay. So, um, overall, Alex was totaling uh, 196 points. The maximum you can have is 200. So, it was just four points shy from doing like a like a full out. Uh, only on stage two, he was not in the first place, so that was quite impressive. Uh, OGS was very close, uh, finished first in the stage two, so that uh, yielded him 50 points for a total of 182 points. Then we have um, Phil from Greece, so that's uh, interesting to see the two Greek guy, uh, the two Greek guy there, and then the the list goes on. So that's quite impressive to see all the guys. And the, the feedback from the event were that it was very interesting for everyone to participate. That was not in Wuhan in China, uh, that was actually in Thailand, as you said, uh, Tullius. And if you want to have more updates on how that was going on on there, you can go on. Uh, Dr. Wee's Facebook page, it did post some updates uh, from uh, over the weekend uh, explaining how to get there, what was uh, interesting, what was different from last year because it was last year at the GOC as well. So that's quite a good thing to, uh, to, to, to give it a look if you want to have more information about um, exactly what, uh, what was going on. And uh, correct me, uh, the cash price was 5k for the winner, then 4K for the first runner-up, and the second runner-up was 3,000 uh, 3, USD. So that's uh, quite an impressive um, cash price. <laughs> and I know yeah, there was some uh, extra cash price for everyone that break world record in the weekend, but I didn't saw any PR, no score, so I guess no one uh, managed to break a world record. Especially it's quite difficult on a live event yeah. to do. And the that scores that we have now are very 
tough as well. I mean, you need, you need to have a very, very good i9 7980XE. You need to have a very good motherboard. You need to have a very good set of graphic cards as well, which is quite a lot of stuff that are quite expensive to all get at the same place at the same time. So that might be one of the reasons actually why um, we didn't saw any uh, uh, update about that. But uh, so far overall, everyone was pleased with the uh, with the event. So um, all good, gonna wait for next year. Uh, let's hope that we have, we're gonna have a live coverage next year because that was a little bit hectic to uh, to get update on the scores. We had to wait, everything was over to actually know who actually made it or, or not in the uh, in the ranking. Uh, of all, like uh, to use Mikalti, what did you think? Uh, what did you thought about the the GOC so far? I think it was very well done this year. Uh, lots of lo from from the pictures that I saw. I mean, Andrew was actually complaining about him having a two gig uh, bandwidth limit. Otherwise, he, he wanted to go live <laughs> and things. But uh, from the pictures we saw, I mean, they would, uh, even e even the hotel, like everybody was chilling. They had like a rooftop swimming pool and stuff. Pretty swanky, I must say. You know what? Yeah. Do you know what that reminds me? Like, uh, uh, like this kind of event, like into a mall, and then with that hotel, that reminds me the GOC in Indonesia. Like, like, oh damn, eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so that was in the mall. There was a lot of people going around and things. So that's actually a pretty decent uh, place to do this kind of event, uh, more than enclosed, actually closed area. But once again, it's not super easy to uh, to pull up. So. Good job, uh, Galax. Uh, that was uh, uh, hard to put on in the in the, for everyone to work, but so far you managed to you managed to do it. So all good. Uh, next topic: the uh, Hungary OC gathering. That was this was this was pretty cool, huh? I mean, um, it was. I think I, I think Bala and Subaru uh, Subaru WRC or. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah, Super WRC, cat move. Um, uh, Super WRC, all of them, they got together and they were benching a lot of hardware. Um, from you, you can you can see quite a fair amount of uh, legacy hardware being benched here, like from your nine, your GTX 980s to like the old the old Gigabyte P6. But P6, they did P7 bench some more. new stuff as well. That was that yes. was good. That that like both. Uh, I think See, that was like, some uh, uh, because they were benching in a shop, so there was some hardware provided by the shop, and there was right. some hardware they brought by themselves as well. Yeah, yeah and they had like dual uh, Vega 64s and stuff like that. Uh, Phil Zoid would have quite liked that dual Vega 64s. I mean, that's actually one of the one of the one of the really nice calls that they actually put out was. Uh, they claimed uh, global first place, I believe, for dual Vegas in uh, 3D Mark. Uh, what was it? In uh, 3D Mark Vantage, yeah. 88,713 points with uh, two RX Vega 64s. So that's currently put them in the first position for dual Vegas in uh, Vantage. That's uh, that's that's good. That's good stuff. And that's good to see this kind of uh, local gathering as well. I mean, if you are part of a community that is uh, local and you don't know who to bench with or you have just a bunch of friends, you can arrange that. You can just, it's it's difficult to just gather LN2 just for you. I mean, the cost and all that. But if you're like maybe five or six, you just spend a weekend, you just buy like 250 liters of LN2, you spread the cost. It's easier for everyone to actually get delivered because sometimes some of the suppliers won't even deliver if you don't order like 180 liter of, yeah. of liquid nitrogen. And you don't have a usage for that if you don't bench like, crazy or if it's your first time or stuff like that so um, go to shops ask them if they can actually uh, host you or help you out to uh, to do that the guys in hungary have been doing that pretty much every year for the past uh past few years as well uh bala is always there so that's uh, that's actually from him that i i knew about the uh the uh the, the meetup so that's actually a good uh, a good thing so yeah good stuff and uh, we will post the uh the link in the description on the on the youtube replay no worry for that um, good stuff going on, but uh, there was some good stuff in Indonesia as well. Uh, it yes. seems that uh, the guys there did the AMD Ryzen Rock Tour, the AMD Ryzen <laughs> Rock Looking Tournament. Um, pretty intensive, uh, quite a 
quite I want to say that um, quite interesting in a way that was actually uh, actually done. There's uh, quite a lot of benchmark and all that. Uh, basically, that started on November twentieth, and uh, that's gonna run until uh, for for the next two weeks, December sixteenth, if I'm right. Uh, there's some price cash price. So you see, like sixty uh, is that sixty thousand or sixty million rupee? That's sixty million rupee. Yeah. Sixty million rupee, which is roughly like four fifty USD for 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 sixty USD. I um, basically, they have like four thousand five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars. In fact, is it's it five thousand? Is it? Ca can you can you do the calculation just to uh, yeah. just to see? And um, what I was saying, oh yeah, so you have two kind of competitions. Uh, you have the ambient competitions for everyone that don't use extreme overclocking, and you have the extreme side for everyone that use uh, LN2. And Indonesia is very very interesting as a country especially for for the overclocking community they are super active they are dedicated and they have university teams as well so we saw that at the hwbot world tour over the past two years three years actually they always have new teams of students coming in and, and participating in that. So for this one, um, the contestant have to use motherboard from either ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, or MSI, which is basically the top uh, the top four manufacturer for motherboards. I mean, I mean, okay, uh, you don't have uh, BioStar or ECS or Jetway or. Do they still make things? I think so. I mean, Jetway is mostly OEM anyway. So I mean, ECS is still exist. Um, oh yeah, ECS do unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's that's your fair. personal opinion. I cannot say oh, we're anything about, about that. This in, the, in the Discord the other day, actually, ECS just make the most beautiful motherboards I have ever laid eyes on. They're genuinely almost every ECS motherboard just looks absolutely fantastic. You like and the they gold? Clock like crap. <laughs> but they, if you're not overclocking, they're fantastic. Um, they, they look amazing. I really like the look of them. The purple ones as well. They've done a lot with the purple PCB. They're, they're they, nice. they did. They, we have to give that to them. We have to give that back to them. Yeah. They did a very good things as trying out things that no one else will ever try. So that, yeah. that's that's yeah, for that, sure. Yeah. But anyway, uh, back to the main topic, which is the AMD Rock Tour in Indonesia. So contestants have to use the ASRock, uh, ASUS, Gigabyte, or MSI for ambient category for each vendor. So that means there's there's different benchmarks and they have to use different motherboards for the different benchmarks as well. So, and this is, this is working only in Indonesia so far. The fact that we have to be good on, across the boards, like literally, no pun, across the boards to all the benchmark and all the brands, that's, that's something we only see in Indonesia and that's, uh, that's quite, uh, quite impressive. Um, there's subcategories as well, so Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7, of course, depending on where you, you don't want to have a Ryzen 3 and compete against someone that have a Ryzen 7, that would not make any sense. So that's, um, that's very interesting to see they can, you know, include pretty much uh, everyone in that. Uh, benchmark-wise, um... It is actually $4,500, Joe. $400,000, so okay, so that's 4K. No, no, no it's 4400 US dollars. So 4.4K. Yeah. Okay, so that's 4.4K. And in Indonesia, that's huge cash price. That is this huge. is a quite a huge cash price. Uh, Benchmark-wise, CPU-Z for maximum CPU clock frequency. I guess it's on all the cores. Uh, I don't know exactly the details for that. Uh, maximum memory frequency as well. Uh, HWBot H HWBot X265 4K. Uh, and 3 mark first strike physics. So that's mainly focusing on CPU benchmark, obviously, which is it's a AMD and not a Radeon Rock Tour. Uh, and Master Judge is a lucky noob that you can actually uh, see on the uh, on the video right here. Uh, lucky noob that was that is one of the most well known and most respected uh, overclocker in Indonesia. Uh, always there to train new people, teach new people, uh, support new initiative, and is the master judge for this um, Ryzen overclocking challenge. So that's uh, that's very good. What do you guys think about the uh, like Mikulti? Do you want to see that in UK one day? Uh, yeah, any overclocking competition in the UK, like uh, official competition in the UK, would be nice. You know, if Hardwarebot could, you know, see their way across the channel anytime, if, if that would be possible, <laughs> that, that, that would be great. 
Um, but yeah, and it's really good to see AMD actually getting really into this. Um, I'm not sure why they haven't done it through hardware bot, especially given that they're using a hardware bot benchmark, but each of their own. Has, I'm sure they have their reasons. Uh, um, even the format, I mean, the format itself is a little bit uh, tricky. That yeah, Maybe it, it's not it's something quite, you can configure in GC. Yeah, it's quite a lot different. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really good to see. Um, and it, yeah, that there is a drought of live events in the UK, considering that we've got quite a lot of active overclockers, but not not that I'm bitter or anything or any. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, difficult in UK. I mean, uh, we saw that over the past few months. It's difficult in UK to gather everyone uh, because you have a lot of um, you have a lot of different teams, but you have a lot of people spread out as well, and. If, if you do that in London, it's very expensive to just uh, everyone travel to London. If you do that oh, yeah, you in, in Yale, it's like no one want to go there. If you do that in Edinburgh, it's like soon you're going to need a passport to go there. So that's that's not going to be work. It's <laughs> it's it's local <laughs> concerns uh, that actually uh, trigger that. But I would love to see that in all the countries. I would love to see that in yeah, more I mean, countries. It's really good to see competitions like this happening. And for, I mean, that it. When people have talked about, you know, AMD being back recently, like in the last year or so, I mean, this is really a part of that, isn't it? The fact that they're, um, you know, that they're, they're pretty much showing off with this. Um, they, they've, you know, they've got something that's good enough for overclocking that they feel it's worth putting this on and really showing their products off. Yeah, and especially Indonesia, that's a, that's a very good market for them as well. I mean, let's yeah, not yeah. forget that... AMD in Indonesia has always, always been good. Uh, Intel has always been, I won't say struggling because they don't struggle li like this, but AMD has always been a special place in Indonesia for, for all the, the overclockers. And we, we, we see that because it's uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, purchase habits, uh, buying power, the fact that all the shops were used to have AMD for quite some time with the Atlum and the, uh, and the FX series. So that's... Uh, Quite a quite impressive for for, for that. Um, I want that's. I think that's it so far. There's um, yeah, all the scoreboard and all that you can find all the uh, the the informations on the. Uh, I will post the link because it's a little bit uh, difficult to <laughs> to pronounce the directly. But yeah, um, other kind of news in the pipe. Uh, Mikkel, you wanted to talk about the. Uh, new Eric's Vega going on? Yeah, so uh, a lot of Vega partner cards are actually starting to, they haven't been launched yet. Some of them have been paper launched, but they're, they're starting to come out. They're starting to show their faces. Uh, so we had the XFX card. That was one of the first ones to show. Oh, is it, is it the Gigabyte? No, no oh, XFX. Yeah, you've got it. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, so the XFX card is uh, certainly a bold design. Um, I think it's going to divide opinion a little bit. I, I quite like it because I like anything that's ridiculous. Um, and that design is ridiculous. So I, I love it. Um, yeah, uh, they haven't released PCB photos. It, you shouldn't judge a card by its power connectors, but it does have an 8-pin and a 6-pin rather than two 8-pins. So there are some people who are saying if there's a Vega Nano coming up, it might be using that PCB. Um, but even if you look at like the back of the card, it feels yeah. like there is no PCB underneath that. So it's, yeah, it's it does PCB. feel like it's actually a, a mini. Yeah, I mean that, that's good for cooling. That means there's you know lots of space for airflow uh, from that second fan. Uh, then we've got the Gigabyte card is a dual fan card as well. Um, yeah, well done, got, got the key. Um, <laughs> and that one they have shown the PCB, I think, or have they? No. No, no they haven't. They, yeah. They've shown a sort of render. They, they've shown a render of the cooler, and that's about it. So we'll see. The, the render of the cooler looks like a 12 phase, but they seem to have rendered power stages or something. But who knows? You can't really take anything from that. I mean, um, that's a yeah, render. That doesn't mean anything on the final part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so for the Gigabyte card, they've gone again with two big fans rather than three fans. Um, whereas the other cards that have come out, uh, that have launched are the Power Color Red Devil, which looks like an absolute monster. It's it looks really quite in a, a, a monster in a good way or in a bad way? No, in a good way. Oh. <laughs> Huge. Uh, both. I mean, it's massive, which is great. <laughs> but I, 
case compatibility could start being an issue. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's as calling wise, it should be brilliant. It's massive. Um, it's well. Uh, let, let's face it. If you use a bench table, you don't have any <laughs> issue with that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, yeah, and it, it looks looks like a beast. I think the PCB that they're using is basically the reference PCB. Um, we have seen that. It is the reference PCB pretty much. It's the same VRM, so that should be good. Um, and then the Sapphire uh, Nitro card as well has come out, or at least has been seen. Yeah, and Again, this one is the it's Buildzoid's favorite, by the way. Oh, yeah, but Buildzoid loves this one. Yeah, Buildzoid wants it. He has been drooling over it. Um, it has LEDs. I don't know if they're RGB LEDs. Obviously, that's important. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what I would say is, I mean, we haven't had the reviews yet. Um, it's very easy to look at these cards and basically just count the number of fans or count, look at the size of the cooler. Or I've even seen somebody who looks at the pre-order pages and looked at the weight of the cards and say, well, that's an indication of performance. And it might be, but you, you have to keep an open mind. Well, OK, uh, this one has three, three power connectors, though. The other one, uh, on, like, yeah. the, like the XFX one, only have two, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. And sort of the red we don't know what that means is it's just it's, it's meaning you know the kingpin 1080 ti has two eight pins well but they're well placed three so they were well placed in the back <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i would take that i'd take that with a pinch of salt mm -hmm. um we'll see and we'll see whether the pcb is actually you know if the vrm can actually deliver the 525 watts that three eight pins implies um you never that, know that that's um, that's crazy you know what it reminds me the the nitro from uh from the uh from sapphire it reminds me the design of the first few msi lightning cards like the 290x the 295 oh, okay. sorry the gtx 295 it used to be like this like rounded silver design as well not not as big as that, like 2.5 slots, but uh, it was just like a like a dual slot one. It reminds me of that uh, uh, maybe that's the color scheme or I don't know. But um, that's good. Basic eight five lightning. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying to find it. I but have uh, the, oh, I actually yeah. have two ninety five. Yeah. Uh, two ninety X lightning. And uh, so so far, which one would you uh, would you would you get personally, Mikolsi? Oh well, I mean, at this stage, it's very difficult to comment. Um, I'd, I'd be tempted to say XFX just because I quite like them, you know, as, as a as a brand. But I think as, as the cards go, the, the power color one is the biggest and the least practical looking, and it, it's, it's it's bigger. Um, uh, so because of that, <laughs> it's I bigger, so I want it like. Okay. Um, that's about what it comes down to, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of, res I would reserve judgment until the reviews are out because it, when you look at, for example, the XFX card, you've got sort of fairly intelligent fan placement. You've got all of the vents uh, cut in the back plate, so that might be surprisingly good uh, for cooling. But we'll see. We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, the, the to use? Yeah, is I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, man. That, that as as always, picture are good, design are great, but if it doesn't perform, that's useless. Yeah. So, well, we will we will see. Uh, to use, what will be yours? Um, I honestly, yeah, I was I was actually angling at the Red Devil myself. Um, this car, although it might be awesome for overclocking, it just depends on. Again, it's down. It's 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 just down to the software and whether you know, like. There is anything special done done to the car that will actually let let it use all three of its eight pins, you know, like in terms of like bios unlocks or like um, yeah, just 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 higher power limits and stuff like that. If that is the case, then the Sapphire card truly truly might stand out from all from all of the rest. But mm -hmm. if it's more of the same, like the way Nvidia does it, I mean, if it's all locked and you know, there's no real point, then I mean. I don't really see the need to go three eight pins and stuff like that. You're better off with just singing, you know, with with the Red Devil. Oh, yeah. you can mislead people to actually get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like marketing wise, that could be a very good move as well. So we have to see um, what can come out of this uh, of this one. I'm sure Blizzard is gonna try to get one. 
Right, I can see it yeah. now. I'm Our sure, next phase sure. is really power hungry. You need the extra power supplied by the third eight pin connector. Yeah. <sighs> Somebody's going to say it on Reddit. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely the kind of comment you can uh, you can get. Uh, Tullius, you wanted to talk about uh, something special that was from uh, video cards as well. Yeah, I mean, I find it cool. Uh, I just I just I, I just came upon that that info that basically the latest version of IDA sixty four, they've got support for a whole bunch of unreleased i seven processors. Like uh, there's the i seven nine uh, eight thousand and the i nine eight thousand series, and like there's just a whole bunch of random CPUs that like they've they've they kind of just pushed out unknown, un, un, totally unheard of CPUs, actually. But the but the cool bit is we might be getting a six-core, twelve-thread uh, CPU on on uh, laptops. The uh, A950HK. Yeah, that that looks good. But once that, again, that... it's it's gonna still be a laptop, so that's good. That's yeah. fun. I mean. Yeah. I'm all over you can tweak and boost the perf of your laptop when you're plugged in, but you have to do the counter things as well when you're actually on battery, so. True, 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 true. Absolutely true. And, like, this could also be, like, you know, the mobile versions of the Intel RTG CPU, the one with the um, HBM uh, Vega core and uh, Intel cores, but the yeah. mobile versions of those CPUs, because... For sure, they're going to do multiple versions of that CPU as well. It's perfect. I mean, it's just it's it's tailor made to actually go into mobile devices. So I'd expect them to do a whole bunch of those. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite impressive. So yeah, all in all, just unknown CPUs, nice stuff. I mean, I wouldn't complain with six core, twelve threads on a laptop, provided it doesn't mm -hmm. overheat and melt and like burn me. No, uh, honestly, it's if you use the laptop for media creation, like exactly what I did. That's why that's why I got a, a new laptop like a few months ago. If you get if you use your laptop for content creation, that's actually the best because yeah. yeah, when you're on battery life, you just use like two four cores. Maybe you deactivate all the others, save the power for it, reduce the thing. Just just use it for normal things. Like yeah. don't even use the internal GPU or anything. But when you're actually plugged in. And you plug like external screens for it and external like all the things you have. It's like that's perfect, as long as as long as it's not struggling with the um, with the cooling, which is the biggest the, the biggest issue when you do uh, this kind of powerful laptop. Because what you want yeah. to have is something you can travel with, do everything you want to travel with with long battery life, mm -hmm. and then when you're actually at home, just use it as a normal PC. Yeah, yeah. And the other benefit, if you've got six cores in a laptop. Uh, we know what Intel's cores are like. They scale down in power really well. Yes. So if you're running a single threaded workload, you can have one of those cores turboing up to, you know, four gigahertz potentially within your power budget. If you're then doing something like if you're rendering something, if you're converting video, doing something that uses as many cores as you can throw at it, then what you can do is you can run all of the cores and run them slower. So in the same power budget, you get more performance. And it's, it's just very flexible that way. Um, so that, that's the other big advantages I see. And also, uh, Intel have this philosophy that they introduced with Haswell for mobile devices called uh, hurry up and go to sleep or hugs, which is basically the idea that what you can do is just run your system as fast as you possibly can, get the task done, and then go into a low power state. Um, so you get a responsive system as well as pretty good power use. And six cores is obviously brilliant for that um, in very short bursts. Um, you, you know, you could potentially be drawing quite a lot more power than your normal power budget. Um, but it would mean just the work gets done quickly, your system has responded quickly, and then the processor goes into a very low power state. It's using next to no power, so it's still as efficient. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. And I would love, I would like kill to, you know, like, honestly, to me, the, 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 the best laptop would be something, something like this. But mm. say, you know, when you want six cores, 12 threads, full blown, you've got them or, you know, you can, yeah. I mean, today you have the capability, but like, to dial in like a proper power budget, for example, if like I'm on an airplane and I'm, you know, I just want my machine to last forever. Mm. I, you know, I would like to set it at say, you know, don't don't even go over two gigahertz because I'm playing yeah. like a video or like I'm just doing yeah. something stupid, and just use one core and you know just give me mm. stupid amounts of battery life. That would be awesome. Yeah, and I'm, I mean in theory, 
modern power management should be able to do just that. Just that. Should be able to run it as slow as it can get away with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or have it powered down for as long as it can get away with in between bursts of activity. In theory. And yeah, in theory, because there, there, there was so many discussions, especially with uh, how did Apple did tweak the power delivery to the CPU that they used to actually shut down, not put in a sleep mode, like shut down part of the CPU directly, and which is something that Windows, uh, there was like discussion like few a few months back that uh, that was not really possible on Windows and stuff like that. But if you, if you drop to a state of it's not being used or powered that much and drops so low that it makes no difference, who cares? Yeah, who cares, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would probably be operating system stuff, I would have thought. If you space out your operating system ticks a bit more, then you've got a longer window for powering down in. Uh, in Anand Tech's initial reviews of Haswell stuff, they've, they go really in depth into this yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. It's just like Windows doesn't 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 kind of let your CPU cycle. It's, it yeah, just it's keeps just it. <laughs> it's just Windows being yeah. Windows. <laughs> <laughs> actually, as it's the first time on the show, are you actually a Linux user or just use Windows and just like to bitch about <laughs> it? Um, I'm currently speaking to you from Windows Seven. Um, I do normally dual boot. I did slightly break my Linux installation when I swapped graphics cards, which is really annoying because it, you know, it kind yeah. of makes Linux look bad. And normally, normally Linux is generally easier to use and has less issues than Windows. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, it varies, but mostly Windows Seven. I, I do quite like Linux. Um, and it, it, it's less annoying for normal use. It's just, I also like Just Cause 3. Um, so. <laughs> okay, and so what? Well, it, it's you can only play it on Windows. So. Well, like like most of the games, actually speaking of that, um, I, I'm i a bit sad that the uh, Steam OS did not went through. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that, it's... There are more games on Linux. It's going up all the time. Rocket League, um, in my experience, runs a bit better on Linux. Um, but it's... Mm. Meh. You know, that's a, that's a little bit uh, tricky. It doesn't have well. good support for GPU overclocking. Uh, yeah. All right. We have something in the live chat. Dan Cup said he had 83.21 points in Azure Road X265 1080p on the 8700K. Which is the best core? Yeah. Okay. And, that, and now it's eighty-three point five three. Dan Cup, instead of just teasing, go on Skype. We're gonna call you, and we want us to show <laughs> live the screenshot that you did, because it's not posted yet on HWBot. So just, just, just come on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just uh, by waiting to oh I can I can I just add him in here okay uh, guys don't worry the the mixed up with the with the thing will be uh, will be all gone but that's uh, that's okay and for the people asking about my camera it's because I use a DSLR for it and the capture card so yeah it looks much better than actually a C920 or regular webcam but yeah thank you <laughs> it's not the camera that looks good. <laughs> oh, call me call me okay we're gonna try to get Dan Cup on the show for the last uh, 12 minutes of the show and then we're gonna uh, jump to the after party if you guys want to join the after party right after we're gonna play Seiyu Sam Fusion and we're gonna play the Seiyu Sam 3 maps uh, because we finished the first one with the extension the second one with the extension now it's uh, time to move on out of the ancient Egypt and move on to the regular world world because the series m3 is actually in a recent world um and uh, otherwise um i don't know like let's try to see if dan cup can be uh, can be called add to call ring 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 oh yes dan cup is here you see me I don't yeah. see anything. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, w wait, wait a minute because it's uh, it's it's all messed up now because of you. Thank yeah. you. 
Um, how are you doing, man? I'm fine. And you guys? All right, so okay. -ish. There we go. I did a nice haircut, but it's not made right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that? just messing around with my stuff. So, 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 explain us what are you doing right now, like? Uh, burning my computer. So, <laughs> there we go. This is life overclocking TV. Guys. <laughs> you see this? And now have a look at this. Wait, we can't see, man. Wait, 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 wait. We can't see it. Shit. Maybe yeah. I can turn the okay, camera. Okay, no, 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 no. It's it's me. It's, I'm trying to uh, to address everything on the on the on the live as well. Uh, okay, before you show the score, what are you benching right now? Like, what is the system you're using right now? Like at this very moment. Uh, it's the Asus Maximus 10 Apex with uh, some G scan memories, a uh, junk graphics card, and the 8,000. <laughs> Because because you're only benching for uh, for CPU, right? Right, it's just uh, CPU test, exactly. Okay, how long have you been benching on that one? Uh, sorry. Uh, how long have you been benching on this platform? Uh, today, just yeah. like thirty minutes. Okay, have, how long have you benched on that platform before then? Uh, I think this is the fourth time I did this chip code. <laughs> oh my god. Uh okay, wait, wait. I'm almost there. I'm almost getting you on the on the on the live. Man, it's uh, wait, no, I can't no wait. What? No. Uh, no. No. No, it's all broken now. Oh god. That that's I really wish one day Skype will uh Skype or Discord will actually fix that. <sighs> Okay. Filter. Truth, my system is running at almost 6.9 gigahertz and it's just idling since five minutes, thanks to you. <laughs> I sorry man, you're not su you were not supposed to jump in. Okay, so okay, okay, almost almost there. Almost there. Cause uh, damn it. Damn it. Well for you it's okay. I mean you're the best overclocker in the world, you could do that. No, my oh chip can do that. The it first time that I did dry ice, my parents called me just after I pulled the system down. <laughs> oh, really? And I, I was on the phone with them for half an hour, just occasionally talking oh, the bot up. Just like, please stop talking to me. I have an E8400 to play with. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. know that. I know that. And, and, and my, my, father, my father always calls me on Skype instead of the normal phone, you know? And, and then you have to show yourself. <laughs> and he's he's like, ah, come on, can you show you? And I just laid down my smartphone, and he's like, hey, where are you? Where are you? And I'm benching. <laughs> Leave me alone right now. Come on, we're back in two hours, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Okay, okay, then come. We have you live. That's okay. We can now people yeah. can see can see you. Um, okay, so let's okay. let's uh, summarize back on what you had. Uh, it's a motherboard, 8700K, uh, 6.9 gigahertz regular uh, regular memory. Yes. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Show, show uh, the score. Show the wait, score. Wait. Show the score. Wait, let let me turn the camera. Might be easier. <laughs> you know the technology all that. See this? Yep. So, uh, yeah, some LN2 on overclocking TV on Friday. That's nice. Are you sitting? Are you sitting at full pot right now, Dan Cop? Yes, uh, since seven minutes right now. I hate you. <laughs> Dude, next oh. time, next time when you call, d don't put it vertical, put it horizontal. Then I don't have to do all that. <laughs> but it's okay. okay. It's okay. I'm super glad to have you on the show. So, uh, so you you did some good score, it seems. Yeah, you want to see it? Yeah. Because it's not on actually the top score for the 8700K on SWF is 82.8 point, and you just did 83.76. Nice, that's insane. You see uh, the frequency? No, we can't read it, it's too uh, too blurry ish. 
So 6.9? Uh, 6.8, 6.86. 6 and I'm, I'm going to try 6.88 right now. Man, you have, you have, could, you have the best 8700K that exists or what? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude. Uh, what other benchmark do you want to bench? Uh, X265, uh, 1080p. But that's the one you did. Uh, exactly, but now with more megahertz. <laughs> but do you plan on having that? Oh man, he's benching it live. No way. <laughs> You it's, know, you it's... know what would be funny to see a blue screen. <laughs> oh yeah, I need some flashlights here. I have, I have. See this? <laughs> <laughs> uh... So let 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 us see eighty four. No, damn. Okay, more me, mega, more megahertz. So, so the guy is actually like on Skype benching to, to break the global first place from that. Oh. Wait, I have to pour my, my pot. Uh, no blue screen. So this is, this is almost 6.9. That's crazy. Oh my God. Can you get closer to the benchmark to see that the score once you pop up? I hope there's a score that pops up. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, that's just Skype lagging. Oh, thank God. Oh, there we go, 84. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Screenshot, man, screenshot. Yeah. Sure. Don't pull a high pro, like going to do something else, make coffee, and then come back to do the screenshot like 20 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> But but actually, this is what I can do with this chip. So uh, it, it it runs it runs hours on full pot without any issue. That's Jesus nice. Jesus Christ! Is that what? is, is what? that a special what? one that you that you bought pre-bent, or that's the one you bin yourself? No, that, that that's the one uh, I bought at Case King. That's the <laughs> five point two advanced edition. <laughs> nice. So that's the one with the uh, new IHS as well. Uh, no, uh, it's my own IHS. You see the frequency? No, we can't see it. Maybe no? No, no, it's all blurry. Okay, uh, right now it's 689. <laughs> I want to I wanna see 69. <sighs> Guys, I, I had uh, something that popped up on my... Uh... On my uh, on my desktop, it says Windows feature update. It's ready to install <laughs> with new features. It could this update could take a little longer. You decide when you make it happen. Obviously, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Windows ten strikes again. Yeah, that's the um, creative uh, creative update for four four creative. Oh, that update. looks good. That one looks good. Let it run, and it might be eighty five, maybe. <laughs> No, but 84.56. That's yeah, still better. Six. Yes. So and so so we know that all that will be your backup score now, right? No, uh, not anymore. It's live. <laughs> I mean, what you think? <laughs> but but actually I'm at uh, 6.9 and I know this chip can do R15 with 7G. Holy hell. So there might be some headroom left. Okay, man. Oh wow. Well, so we don't want uh, we don't want to uh, disturb you uh, too much uh, too much longer. Uh, <laughs> gonna let you bench. We can't wait to uh, to see you post the score on HW bot. Uh, thanks for sharing that uh, in in the live. I really appreciate that. How long are you gonna be benching again Thank tonight? Uh, for the next hour or or so, or just a, just a few minutes like this. Uh, I will try the 4K as well. I have some issues with the memory. Um, you have to go higher with the maximum in the OS. Uh, and then I cannot boot my memories into the OS. So I have to find the right settings for it. Okay, so it but, might, uh, you, you but, might have not the, the, the 4K score for tonight. That might be uh, later on in the week. Actually in the weekend. Uh, 
Uh, uh, during the weekend, uh, I, I will try a graphics card tomorrow. Interesting. Which one? Uh, Galaxy Hoth. I I got one borrowed, so nice. I will I will, I will just I will just play something. No idea. I think 3D Mark 11 and uh, maybe Fire Strike. Who knows? Perfect. And That's if you good. want, if you just want to to stream something, just uh, just mean hit me up. Okay. Uh yes, I will. I will. Perfect, okay. guys. Uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, end of the OC show. That was the episode 420. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Dan Cobb, for being here with us. I appreciate you share your global top score breaking uh, right on the live. That's something uh, we would love to see more often. Uh, thank you, Mikkel T, for being uh, for being here this uh, for tonight. You did very well as a first time no guest. Uh, anytime you want to come back, you're more than welcome. <laughs> But uh, actually, yeah. having you and Bill do it on the same show, I'm not sure that's a good idea. But uh, <laughs> uh, it could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, this is the topic, and then I, I drop the headset and leave for like two hours, and then come back. You're still on it. <laughs> um. Yeah, that, that could probably be the, the topic, case. But maybe. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for being here with us and uh, jumping in at the last yeah. minute. Uh, thank you, Zulius, for always being here. And thank you, guys, on the live chat. Thank, thank you, PKK Shadow, for the subscribe. I could not actually give you the shout-out right into the uh, into the things, but thank you very much for the support. I appreciate that. That's going to put to some blue screen. Blue screen. Blue. That's going to be put for some good use. And if you're watching this on YouTube in the replay, don't forget to <laughs> actually uh, sub subscribe. Is it on top or below? Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave us your comment on what you want to see or what you want to expect or to, uh, ask to any uh, of the guests that we have and uh, we're gonna see you uh, we don't close the show we close the, the video for YouTube but we're just gonna find you back for the after party Dan Cobb that's the happiest blue screen I've ever seen <laughs> that, that, that's, been, that's been on purpose so. <laughs> perfect <laughs> well thank you guys enjoy cheers guys cheers